everybody, and welcome to another edition of Poland Daily Travel, which we are happy to bring you over this uh, uh, winter holiday season. With me is Philip Goss in the studio. Philip, welcome. Hello. It's always a pleasure to see you, sir. Thank you. You always make this show much more jolly. And uh, we also have uh, Tony McFarlane Gonzalez. Our topic is for this show is how did air travel get so weird? It was one way before COVID, and now it's a totally different thing after COVID. I mean, the planes still fly, but there are a lot of weird rules. Uh, not so much in Europe, but on transcontinental flights. Transatlantic? Um, uh huh. Transatlantic, you mean? Tran well, transatlantic or transcontinental, other place. Anytime you're going on a long haul, there are a lot more difficulties, it seems. Uh, but maybe I'm not right. Let's, let's see what our panel thinks. So let's start with Tony. Tony, you had something you wanted to say about this. Yeah, no, air travel has gotten, it's been weird since the restrictions were put on us in 2020. And a lot of the industries have really gotten, well, have cracked down on some of the planes that they were having. For instance, I'm just going to bring one model in particular that a lot of people would love to fly on, and it actually affected major air and airline industries, which are the A380. Uh, the airline industries cannot afford that. So it was long haul, heavy passenger loads, and that's one of the reasons because the air travel in 20, 20, 2019 uh, was really good. And now they're starting to see the rules that they put in, put in place, such as limited the amounts of carry-on weight. You have to put in masks. You constantly have to wear them. Uh, and just in close proximity. I mean, it, some of that stuff makes sense. If you're sick, come on, stay at home. That's obvious. Some of us can't afford that. Some of us need to travel over sick, so they put make you put on a mask or just for safety rules anyways. But... Uh, yeah, that's one of the things that I saw that the airlines are now starting to pick up again. And the mothballed airplanes, mostly A380s, now they're having an issue trying to re, re what's it called, reinstate them to actually get back to the normal aviation travel. Mm -hmm. uh, the country that's suffering the most, that's outside of Europe, <laughs> is actually India, and they're having a localized issue because they have 11 million people per airport. And they're suffering, so they really have been buying a lot of those mothballed airplanes from Lufthansa, just to see an example, or uh, British Airways or Air France. Just to, and, but then how are they going to make up for those loss of travel and loss of machines for moving people around? Yeah, it's, it's almost like when you make these changes, anything that you change, it's very hard to go back to the status quo before the changes. Uh, it's like when they make new laws. It's very hard to get a law off the books once it's made. There's a kind of inertia in these changes. So it's very scary when you start seeing the airlines make a lot of changes. For example, I know some people who were looking at flights and the actual checked baggage costs more than the ticket. Have you heard of that? <laughs> Somehow it doesn't surprise me. Have you heard of that? I mean, I yeah, that. actually, for, for me, for cycling, yeah, that's I was like, what the hell? Because you're taking your bike <laughs> with you, for example, yeah, or golf clubs or something. Uh, Phil, you said you're not surprised. It surprised me. Well, they've been, uh, they've been moving towards trying to have people uh, not check on bags or certainly pay a la carte rather than uh, assuming that a, a checked bag is a part of every ticket. And I suppose when we are not forced to include that as a part of ticket price, we're able to opt out if we don't. I often fly without needing to check a bag. You think it's they're taking that off the ticket price? I don't think so. I think they're trying to get the money both ways. But well, we'd need an airline industry spokesman. To partially talk. true. However, yeah. if I do know that I need to check a bag, either direction or both directions, it usually is cheaper to purchase the type of ticket that would include that rather than try to add it on later for $70, 75 So premium economy, for example. Not necessarily premium economy. If it's business economy, class, you don't have a problem. Uh, economy but light includes has, has no bags, whereas economy basic would include a bag. Economy basic would include a bag. Yeah. yeah. Okay. One. Just one. Yeah, but, I know, but some, I was finding some people were saying they had to still pay extra. I had to pay extra during COVID for bags that I was taking. It would usually end up being uh, 75 to $100 for that checked bag each way. Yeah, it can be. Yeah, which I found exorbitant considering it was all free and you used to be able to take two bags for free. A lot of people watching this won't remember that. But back in the early 2000s, you could take two bags. Well, 
and without paying anything. Mm -hmm. You and I are old enough to you remember, remember that? when. You could take. A, I used to take yes, my bike too. We're old Sometimes. enough to remember when people still yeah. smoked on airplanes. Well, oh, we're God, old yeah, enough to remember long. that. That's what the early nineties. Yeah, yeah, when people were still yep. smoking on airplanes. That seems hard to believe. Through about 94 or 96, maybe. Yeah. Now that we know how bad smoking yeah. is for you, even the secondary smoke is almost as bad as primary. Yeah. So it's terrible. Yeah. Um, I, there are other things about, about the, the flying, just the, the delays. As you say, a lot of planes were mothballed. So that uh, opening things up has led to a lot of delays, like the supply chain. It's kind of a similar phenomenon, I suppose, isn't it? that uh, uh, there's less planes, so there's more waiting. And there's less pilots to go around. So all of that is, is as demand increases and you open things up. So it takes a while for that supply to catch up with the demand, right, as you start yes. reopening the airlines. Would you say that's correct? Yes, yeah. I would. Yeah, it makes sense. It seems to. Yeah. And uh, what else about traveling? Is there, I'll tell you something else that's annoying in the United States about traveling. It doesn't happen here. It's all the fist fights. You know? There was that fight where this guy was bothering Mike Tyson, and Mike Tyson says, come on, man, leave me alone, leave me alone, leave me alone. Then the guy keeps touching him on the back of his head or something. This is Mike Tyson. The guy must be out of his mind. Mike Tyson turns around in his seat and just starts pummeling the guy. This is Mike Tyson. Leave Mike Tyson alone. That's my advice. But not only, leave everyone alone when you're flying. Don't have tantrums. Be polite. Help people put their bags up if, they're, if you can and they're smaller than you are or they can't get reach the place. Be nice on the flight. You're all in it together, right? Don't you think? No. Uh, I think just people have forgotten how to just be respectful in general. It's just that that guy was uh, a generation Y or whatever the heck that stuff is. But just the younger generation has forgotten what we learn to respect people and respect our elders and help whenever somebody Tony, really I, needs I help. I disagree. And, they haven't forgotten yeah. it. They never learned it. Oh, okay, good point. There. Well, we need a spokesman from the their, their 20s. I think the very youngest people who are in their teens now are changing. A lot of them becoming more conservative in their behavior and much more focus, uh, observant. I think it's observant, being observant. And if you have headphones on and you're playing with your phone, you're not observant, you're not thinking about anyone else. You're in your own little world, and that's a big problem. So if you want to see the world, get out of your own little world. That's advice for Polar Bailey Travel. And <laughs> <laughs> I want to thank everybody for watching. Like us, subscribe, do all those things on YouTube to show us that you love us, because we do this for you. Thanks for watching. Happy holidays. See you on the next show tomorrow night.